Theatre is one of those institutions that is continuously and very deliberately evolving and changing. The extremely wide scale of things that we would today class as theatre is far, far beyond what in the 19th century and before that would have been known as theatre. As long as the population continues to grow and the cultural fingerprint evolves, then so will this industry in order to meet the social and cultural requirements of our society. It has the ability to be a direct representation of the hearts and minds of people, ex especially within the genre of new writing. Our society today is no longer bound by the same constraints and limitations of past generations. Individuals are now at liberty to exercise free will in all things, and as a result, um, the development of the arts, the influence of other cultures, the influence of technology, uh, in increasing education levels, and many other factors have paved the way for the very eclectic arrangement of what we now term as theatre. In the time of the Greeks, uh, theatre was mainly Greek mythology and celebrating the gods. Theatre celebrated the rituals to the gods and, and, and then the genres of comedy and tragedy were developed. It was about retelling and reinforcing the stories that were important. That was what the people of the time were about and so the theatre reflected that also. When the Romans were developing their theatre, the idea of theatrical performance as we know it began to take a back seat. The Romans favoured the gladiatorial games and, and so therefore performing plays became a bit like play reading with an audience. After theatre's long retreat, um, it was reignited within the church and therefore the content would always be of a biblical nature. You know, and now you start to see the pattern. Despite the time a show is setting, theatre reflects the time in which it was made. Moving up from there and up to the Renaissance period, this is a time that has been described as the cultural and intellectual rebirth of Europe and the link between the Middle Ages and the modern world. This was a time of new developments and shifted thinking in areas such as art and science and literature and politics and music and religion. So, you know, it's no wonder that this was also the time of playwrights such as William Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe, who aside from the early Greek playwrights, could be described as being the first movers and shakers in theatre. The restoration period again was a time of many changes. After 18 years of banishment, theatre was again suddenly being actively encouraged, and this time with an even stronger backing Hence the emergence and popularity for larger theatres with even more spectacular sets. By the early 19th century, theatre's place within society and history had already been carved, but it was rigid, bound by the same social and cultural restrictions as the people of that time. It was a very naturalistic proscenium arch style model. So it's no wonder that mid-century to now, which has been a time of individuality and free thought and speech and culture integration and, and technology growth, that we are now at a place where theatre has taken on a whole host of forms. It no longer has need to conform to any of the prior customs. It now has the authority to go in any direction the creative teams please. I think that the same can be said about today's society and culture. Individuals no longer need to conform or mirror each other in order to be accepted among society. In summary, I think it can be said that theatre truly moves with the times and always will. The thing to remember is theatre is all that is present and now. Regardless of all other factors, it is always created by the people of the present and therefore no matter the setting or the staging, our theatre will always have the soul of what is now.